Yes. So before the break, uh, we were looking at um, the example of Demas and how even though he was in full-time ministry, even though he was a man who knew the word of God and shared the gospel and all of that, um, he allowed himself to be um, to be drawn away by the attractions of the world. Uh, so how can we keep ourselves from making the same mistake? Um, let's look at a few scriptures. Uh, maybe the first scripture that we could, uh, you know, read is Mark chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. If someone could please read out for us, Mark 4, 18 and 19. Mark 4, verses 18 and 19. Still others, like seed sown among thorns, hear the word, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires of other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Okay, so um, we know that the word of God is supposed to bear much fruit in our lives. Uh, and um, when we choose to uh, practice the word of God, when we choose to think in alignment with the word of God, you know, the, and have the priorities which the word of God is recommending for us, when we live in that way, the word of God becomes fruitful in our lives. It accomplishes the purposes for which it has been, you know, revealed to us. And we, um, uh, we grow in God. Uh, we become more like Christ. Um, and we also enjoy the kind of uh, uh, full, abundant life that we are meant to. All of this happens for us when the word of God becomes fruitful in our lives. But over here, we see that there are some people uh, who hear the word, get to st start getting to know the word of God, but then they are drawn away by something else. It talks about the deceitfulness of wealth and the desires for other things. So... Um, they start looking at the wealth uh, in the world and all that it promises. You know, wealth promises status. People are going to think better about you if you have money in your hands. You know, uh, uh, if you have wealth, then you have more power. You can control people. You can get things done which normal normal people cannot. You know, so wealth gives you a lot of power to be able to do things that others cannot do. Um, uh, wealth also looks like as if it can make people very happy, you know, because you have all these pictures of smiley faces, you know, uh, in uh, uh, in rich surroundings, uh, having a lot of money, and we assume that if you know wealth will make us very very happy. Uh, so deceitfulness of wealth, we start thinking that if I can get wealth, oh, then my life is made. You know, which is why people have this strange idea that if you win a lottery and uh, you win some, you know, some huge amount of money, then automatically you must be a very, very happy person. And uh, someone, in fact, had written an article. I remember reading a few months ago an article about how life becomes really tough after you win a lottery uh, because now everyone is jealous of you. Everyone hates you. Everyone wants something from out of you. And, um, you know, uh, Humans don't change, so life actually doesn't change. Money doesn't that money doesn't actually make things uh, better. Uh, so deceitfulness of wealth. So um, uh, so you start uh, you know focusing on earning wealth, um, becoming uh, more rich, assuming that that will make you more happy, that that will take care of the problems in your family, that that will you know solve all your issues. So the deceitfulness of wealth makes you start spending more and more time in earning that wealth. And what happens in the process? The word of God, which you have heard you know, a few times, that word of God gets choked. It gets cut off because you have no time for it, right? You have, I mean, practicing it, following it is going to take a lot of time. I mean, you know, you got to spend time in God's presence. Uh, you, you, you got to, you know, um, be careful about not compromising. Uh, and, and the word of God says that you have to spend time in church with God's people and all of that. Where's the time? You've got, you got to make wealth. You've got to earn wealth. You've got to chase after it. So the deceitfulness of wealth, it draws you away from the word and you have less and less time for it. And this word of God gets choked. 
in the sense it can no longer operate freely in your life and help you to become all that you're meant to you have now pushed it off into a corner so the word of god gets choked in your life and it says over here making it unfruitful so the word which has got great power within it to to actually make a person's life and establish them that word of god is rendered unfruitful in that person's life because they are now really really busy chasing after this wealth which has deceived them and in the same way all the other desires the desires for other things you know the bible says you know place these things first these desires first the kingdom of god his righteousness uh, you know loving people and putting other people's interests first you know see this uh, the bible says you know desire for these things but over here the world is saying that you got to desire other things you know which are all completely self focused so when you start chasing those things the word of god gets choked uh, there's no room for it to operate in your life any longer and accomplish the things that god wants to accomplish and so the word of god is left is is, is rendered unfruitful okay so so um so what happens in such a person's life uh, we see uh, the details being mentioned in second peter chapter 2 verses 20 and 21 second peter 2 20 and 21 second peter chapter 2 verses 20 and 21 if they have escaped the corruption of the world by knowing our lord and savior jesus christ and are again entangled in it and are overcome they are worse off at the end than they were at the beginning and verse 21 have, hmm. it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than to have known it and then to turn their backs on the sacred command that was passed on to them so you see it's a very dangerous thing for believers to get sucked back into the world we were in the world once our priorities were the same as the world's priorities uh, and you know we had no interest in what god wants we had no interest in pleasing the lord we were in that state but then we came out of that condition and we uh, got to know the way of righteousness you know the, the way it says over here in verse 21 we got to know the way of righteousness uh we got to know our lord and savior jesus christ so uh we started to to move away from the world and now our priorities completely changed uh we began to want to please god uh we began to renew our minds and we began to realize oh there are things which are more important more precious and which have long term benefits for me so we began to understand all of that and so uh the the hold of satan upon our life started to get weak you know he could no longer control us the way he controlled us before we were now in no longer in the kingdom of darkness we were now in the kingdom of the sun and uh, so um we started to live free lives we started to um uh, to become uh, the christ like people that god wanted us to be now such a person if they neglect spending time in god's word if they neglect you know uh, praying in the spirit and allowing the holy spirit to strengthen them if they neglect these things and uh, you know if they start um, spending more time on worldly things and allowing its uh, you know its lure you know the, its its attraction to to start growing in their lives when they start doing that then satan really sits up and takes you know pays attention because now he's is able to gain a foothold in that person's life and so he will start making every effort to literally drag them down into the pit with him i mean it, that person is in a very very dangerous state because now they have deliberately chosen to allow the word of god to start getting choked you know they they're pushing it off into the into the into the sidelines they have no time for the things of god they have they're very very busy now 
you know, uh, spending more and more time on the attractions of the world. And when that happens, it's very, very dangerous because they start getting entangled in it. And one day, if they continue to delay and, you know, continue to not take care of this great danger, the entangling will increase more and more. And one day they will be completely overcome. And when they're completely overcome, like Demas, they will say no more. They'll turn their back on Christ, walk away. So, and, that, and it says over here, they are worse off at the end than they were at the beginning. It would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. I mean, what a serious statement to make, you know, here, uh, Peter, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he is saying, it would have been better if these people had never become believers, first of all. Because at least then, you know, um, uh, maybe they would have been, you know, average sinners and their fate in hell, their judgment in hell would not have been that severe. But now these are people who came into the family of God, who knew the Lord, uh, you know, and who knew the way of righteousness. And now when they turn their back on it, you know, the Satan's grip on them will be so strong now uh, that he will drag them down probably to the lowest levels. And then the judgment upon them, the eternal judgment upon them will be really, really great. It's a very, very dangerous thing to do. So once you're in Christ, better to stay in Christ. You know, if, if you get careless and if you allow uh, Satan to gain a larger and larger foothold, you will get so entangled that one day you will no longer be able to free yourself from the entanglement. You know, you will be overcome by it. So it the this these verses here are talking about the serious danger of a believer allowing themselves to get attracted by the world. So every time we, we see the attraction of the world increasing, you know, um, the uh, the the, the, the promises which wealth makes, you know, the, 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 the things which the world is regarding as important and chasing after, when all those things start becoming more and more important and we start realizing no time for church, no time for prayer, no time for the Bible, no time for all those believers who want to come and say hello and sit with you and talk and talk and talk, no time for all of those things. If you start noticing that, immediately understand that this is the first sign of danger. If there's no time, then it means that you're literally choking off those things of God. No time for them. And this time which you're in, that you're now investing upon the world is increasing and increasing. The entanglement will start getting tighter and tighter. You know, you, uh, the, 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 the ropes with which the world is tying you starts getting tighter and tighter. And one day, you no longer you'll discover that you're not able to overcome the world's attraction anymore. Now it is so attractive that God is not looking attractive in the least. And you no longer have that desire to come to him, to return to him, because now you have been overcome. So it's a very, very dangerous place to be. And so we believers have to take a strong stand and choose not to be drawn into the world. And um, so the advice given to us in James 1.27 is this. Uh, if someone could read out James 1.27. James 1 verses 27. Religion, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. So you see, what is actually true religion which which god the father finds acceptable you know which he considers as pure and faultless true religion is this where you are actively involved in the world in the sense you see you you can see the need of people you're going out to them whether they are believers or unbelievers you're getting involved in their lives you're you know doing whatever you can to help them uh, you know to 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 raise them up out of the difficulties that they are in 
you're fully actively involved in the world you're not sitting on a, on a mountain somewhere meditating no you're very very actively involved in society you're very very aware of the of the needs which are there you're very very aware of the people of you know, that strata of society that has nobody to look after them and you and you and and you can see all the you know the evil that is being done by those in power how they are taking advantage of them you can see all of these things you are extremely aware of your current affairs you know what's going on and you are fully involved but you are not allowing yourself to be polluted by the world so through religion what god finds as pure and faultless is this being fully involved in the world where you have been placed where you are very aware of what is going on and where you want to bring in god's values and establish them so you are very very active in that but at the same time while you are interacting with the world you don't allow yourself to be polluted by the world so you know you 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 meet with people powerful people you interact with them you raise up funds for you know whatever project god has laid on your heart um you you're uh, you know you you you're walking around with the big names in society you know you you go and meet politicians you 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 know you you work towards you know having uh, legal policies brought into place which can make society better your name gets you know published in the newspaper you're among the big people but you are not allowing their priorities to touch you you don't allow their priority to start coloring your priorities you stay true to god you stay true to what the bible is teaching because you know that having your name in the newspaper today is very nice having your photos taken with all the big people is very nice but it's so temporary those people are going to die and they'll go to whatever you know uh, destiny they have you know uh, chosen for themselves but you are one who is going to one day go into the new jerusalem and be there for eternity in the presence of god so you have bigger things on your heart and mind so you do not allow the priorities of these other people to rub off onto you so when they invite you to their parties and they ask you to you know join one more extra project because that's going to you know make a lot of money you say no because you know that you need to create time for the things of god so you only take on the things which you have been enabled by god to do but you say no when it starts choking out god so immediately that becomes a warning sign to you the day you realize that you don't have time for the bible the day you realize that you have to start bunking church the day you realize those things you immediately realize oh the world is taking over and i better pull back i better pull back and give the word of god breathing space enough room in my life to do what the word of god wants to do so you choose to uh, keep yourself safe and not allow yourself to get polluted by the world because that's how hap- that's how it happens the pollution is very slow and gradual in the beginning and that's what must have happened with demas he never even realized that he was getting polluted he was ignoring the warning being given by the holy spirit and finally one day that pollution took over he became so polluted he became so entangled that he could no longer overcome the attraction that was so strong he could no longer overcome it and he chose to go back into the world so we choose not to do that and we we can keep ourselves from being polluted why because of second peter 1 3 if someone could read out for us second peter 1 3 His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. So we have been given the divine power you know and we have been given everything we require for a godly life. So it's not impossible it is not difficult you know because uh, from childhood we are taught you know you need to get the best marks in class you need to be the the the, the you know the highest scorer uh, when you take up uh, extra curricular activities you need to shine in those extra curricular activities our parents kind of drill that into us that you got to be the best you got to be the highest 
you got to be and and, and when, you, when you start you know entering into college uh, then you say oh go for the you know go for those career options uh, you know which will um, earn you the highest uh, salaries where you can live a comfortable luxurious life and that, that, that's basically what is what is taught to us right right from the time that we are a toddler and we just want to go and play over there you know in, in the sand and in the mud and your parents are saying no 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 the mud and the sand is not important come read your books because that is going to make your life you're going to earn a lot of money and you're going to be so we are taught this from a very young age and so we think that you know uh, these things are the most important things in life to be able to grow up get a good job make a lot of money and establish my you know uh, myself in life so from a young age we are literally you know tuned in our minds to think that this is the goal of life and how do you fight something like that you know when you become a believer you grow up and you become a believer and you suddenly realize that this is this entire and entirely different system in place a godly system in place which is saying exact opposite of everything that you were taught from childhood and you are like now trying to you know reprioritize and you think my goodness how do i reprioritize all my life i have been told that i'm supposed to become rich and get a really grand job and you know make my make a name for myself in life and now here i am in this kingdom of god and over here everything is like upside down every here everything god is saying put other people's interests before your own how do i change this whole uh, you know uh, the, this whole priorities and all of this how do i renew uh, my mind if you're thinking that and you're wondering how you can ever overcome the attractions of the world this is the verse for us it says over here his divine power and what kind of power is this it's the resurrection power of god you know that's being talked about over here that power has given us everything we need for a godly life so even as we go to him humbly and we say lord what am i to do my whole life i was taught that this is what i should aim for and now here you are trying to teach me an entirely new set of things which is like so different and so new i don't even know how to be this other person but lord you said in your word that your divine power has been given to me you know your own divine power which that that resurrection power which raised up christ from the dead that power has been made available to me to be able to live a godly life so lord you enable me you help me you help me to renew my mind so that i start reprioritizing everything so that i start looking at everything in a new way and the law the lord will help us you know to live in this new way he will enable us to you know put on god every day to such an extent that these attractions of the world will not look that attractive we will start seeing things in the correct perspective and we will realize that actually what the world is offering is so temporary and in fact so shallow because everything looks so bright and shiny on the outside you know with the, with the people in their beautiful clothes and you know the money in their hands but when you look when you take a peek into their inner lives oh what a mess what addictions what hatred and jealousies and you know conspiracies to pull each other down and oh what an ugly mess it is you know when you, when you just when you peek inside so we start seeing things the way god sees them and we realize that oh what the world is actually offering is as very very attractive is not attractive and we are able to stay true to what the scripture is teaching us so these are things that we start learning through the power of the holy spirit who is working in us and he has already given us everything we need for a godly life and so he will empower us he will equip us so we can turn to him and say lord you promised in your word that i will be able to live a godly life in you so you help me oh lord to keep myself you know from being polluted by the world i want to put on god every day i would what do want to make any provision for the flesh you know so even as we say all of those things he will enable us not to be sucked into the attractions of the world coming to the second point you know which is very similar to what we have already talked about the cares and pressures and responsibilities uh, that we have when we are in this world you know because uh, uh, we have to earn our livelihood 
which means that we have to you know spend a huge chunk of our day at our workplace uh, you know doing the things which are required uh, for our job uh, then when we come home we have responsibilities at home we have our family members who are depending upon us uh, there are things that we need to do for them and then uh, there are all these um, you know things which are not going right you know at the workplace here at home in our relationships uh, you know uh, the, the 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 pressures of life as in you know the finances uh, maybe maybe are not adequate uh, then there are um, uh, uh, people who are working against us trying to you know pull us down uh, you know blackening our name all kinds of things are going on so all of these are the cares and the pressures and the responsibilities and those things start weighing down upon you and you think my goodness there's so many things to struggle through in 24 hours where's the time for god so that also becomes another thing which chokes the word so when we look at mark chapter 4 18 to 19 which we have already read not only does it talk about the deceitfulness of wealth and the desires for other things which choke the word. Another thing which chokes the word is the worries of this life. That's what it says in Mark 4, 19. The worries of this life choke the word. So when we find ourselves so caught up in our job, so caught up in the things that need to be done at home, you know, when we are so caught up in, in all these uh, responsibilities that are there on our shoulders, and the word of God gets getting choked, starts getting choked. At that time, we need to sit and ask ourselves, Lord, how did my priorities go off balance? How do I get back on track? Because the uh, Christian life is all about balance. And God is the one who helps us to stay in balance. He helps us to maintain uh, the right balance between our responsibilities in this life and our responsibilities towards him the one who has saved us the one because of whom you know we are able to even think about having an eternal life so in fact we have a huge responsibility towards him yes we have a responsibility towards our work we have a responsibility towards our families we have a responsibility towards those in society who are you know looking up to us we do have a responsibility towards all of them but our ultimate responsibility is towards god it's because because of him, we at least have eternal life now. Because of him, at least now we have, you know, been a peace with God has been made and our future is now secure. So more than anything else, we have a responsibility towards God. So he gets to decide how to strike the balance. He gets to decide how much time I should spend on my work. He gets to decide how much time I should spend, you know, on... Um, responsibilities regarding the family you know regarding uh, society and all of that and he will enable us to strike the right balance that's what jesus says right he says all those who are tiring and weird heaps of burdens on your shoulders come to me come to me and he says i will teach you he says i'm, I'm a gentle and humble teacher is what he says in matthew 11. You know, the, the verses are matthew 11 uh, 28 to 30 or, or something like that and over there in those verses he says i am a humble and gentle teacher i will teach you you know so rather than putting on the yoke of the world and allowing it to tell you how you should live put on my yoke i will tell you how to live in a balanced way I will teach you the right priorities so that you will be able to fulfill the things that you're supposed to do. At the same time, you will be able to grow in the things which I want you to grow in so that your future is established firmly, so that your family is secure in my hands. So the Lord says, he will teach us. So Jesus Christ will be our teacher. He will you know, speak to us even as we spend time in his presence. He will show us how to balance things how to get things right you know so he will enable us uh, to 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 balance the cares of this life with the um, uh, heavenly priorities that we also need to be watching out for the lord will do this for us so we need to go to him and he will help us um, another thing that maybe we could keep in mind would be first peter 5 7 to 9 uh, if we can have someone read out First Peter one, uh, no, sorry, First Peter five, First Peter chapter five, 
uh, versus seven to nine all your anxiety on him because he cares for you be alert and of sober mind your enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour resist him standing firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings it says in verse 9 you know resist the devil uh, standing firm in the faith. So we choose to believe and trust this Jesus and say, no, Jesus knows what is best. He's my teacher. He said, take my yoke upon you. You know, he gave me the salvation invitation. Jesus Christ gave his salvation and invitation and said, come to me. Don't follow the world anymore. Come to me and in me you will find rest is what Jesus has promised. So you stand firm in the faith and say, I will choose to live according to Jesus' priorities. What he is guiding me and advising me on a daily basis, you know, during my quiet time, when I'm spending time with him you know, on my knees, what is he conveying to me? What lessons is he teaching me? I'll choose to hold on to that. I will stand firm in faith. It may look like as if, you know, my job is going to suffer because I'm not giving it enough time. It may look like as if, you know, uh, people are going to be angry with me because I'm not going for all those things which they are asking me to go for. Fine, no problem. Let them be angry. But if I can hold on to Jesus, he will work it all out. So resist the devil and don't allow him to, uh, you know, forcefully suck you into the world. But resist him and say, no, I will stand firm in faith and trust this Jesus to, you know, um, tell me what I should do and what I should not do. So when you hold on to him like this in stubborn, strong faith, saying, no, whatever the world is saying, whatever people are saying about me, I choose to follow what Jesus is asking me to do. I will prioritize my day. I will give this many hours for this and I'll give this many hours for God. And if you, if you make up your mind and you choose to live in that well-balanced manner, the Lord will take care of your needs. Because it says here, cast all your anxiety upon him because he cares for you. He knows that you have a job that, you know, and you need to earn your livelihood. He knows that you have family members who need to be taken care of. Does he not know these, know these things? In fact, he says, if you come to me and take my yoke and learn from me, you will find rest for your souls. So he is interested in giving us a good life. But he says, you got to trust me to, you know, uh, to, to decide for you what your priorities should be. I will tell you how to work out your, you know, work and, um, you know, home uh, family life balance. I will show you how to balance between uh, the, the responsibilities of the world, which you need to fulfill, and my res your responsibilities towards me and towards the kingdom of God. I will show you how to do these things. And he's a very, very practical God. He will bring very, very practical thoughts to your mind, even as you're spending time in his presence. He will guide you and lead you on how to live out your life because you can really cast all your... us and it says over here you know believers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings and trials so it's not like as if what we are undergoing is something exclusive and god the same god who is strengthening them and helping them to take a stand will come through for us. You know, if we could actually go to Matthew 11 and uh, look at that before we you know, move to the next point. Um, Matthew chapter 11, I think it was verse uh, 28 onwards where Jesus, you know, makes his salvation invitation to us. Um, Matthew 11, 28. Matthew 11, 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and mm. I will give you rest. Mm. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Uh, my yoke is easy 
and my burden is light you know uh, jesus does not lie <laughs> so he's not saying that life will be easy because he says you know you, you will have trials as long as you're in this world he has made that very very clear so he is not saying that you know he'll all all your problems will go away but what he is saying is as you learn to depend on me and learn from me you'll discover that what i'm teaching is actually practical you will be able to do it you know so because there are people who are uh, who are taking on so many responsibilities and they still have time for god and they are doing something significant for his kingdom they are not in full time ministry i mean they have their own you know uh, uh, routines and responsibilities that god has given to them but they are able to make an impact for the kingdom of god in their own way why because they have discovered that if you really you know take take on jesus yoke and follow what he is saying and do things his way he will work out the details he will make sure that you know all aspects of your life are taken care of and you will find rest for your soul in him so we have this beautiful promise of jesus and so we choose to stand firm in our faith with him we do not give in to satan's temptation you know to to allow our entire world to revolve around our anxieties revolve around the attractions of the world we choose rather to keep our trust in jesus and follow him um coming to the next uh, you know the, the third thing about overcoming the world uh, so we looked at the attractions of the world how to overcome those we looked at the cares and anxieties and responsibilities that we have and how to deal with those in the right manner and coming next to the hardships and the difficulties and the trials and in fact even the persecutions that we face in life you know how do we overcome this aspect of the world um so just going to that uh, you know verse which talks about the trials with which will be there in the world and how jesus says don't worry i'm still there with you you know that would be john 16:33 so if someone could read out that for us uh, john 16:33 John 16:33 I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace in the world you will have trouble but take heart I have overcome the world So mm -hmm. Jesus is saying you will have trouble in the world because we are living in a fallen world and that fallen world is following a, a very crooked uh, system with very crooked priorities they are uh, giving a lot of importance to things which are minor and things which are really really important they are not giving any importance to them and th that is why so many people are suffering the rich are getting richer their lives are good but then the ones who are poorer are really suffering because of the way the priorities are all wrong all messed up and that is why we are the, the world that we are living in is, is in such a mess and things are not going to be smooth living in this kind of a world so there will be trouble there will be hardships but jesus says you know you can still have peace in me in me you may have peace is what he says so he says take heart i have overcome the world i know exactly how to deal with all these issues that you are facing so even as you choose to trust me keep your eyes focused upon me do the things which i am guiding you to do and even as you're doing that i will make sure that you know i'll guard your heart and mind so that you will have peace in spite of all that's going on in your life so this is a promise that god makes to us so uh, you know there are times when we will be persecuted because of our stand for jesus you know we we are not willing to compromise we are not willing to uh, do the crooked things which the world does and so when when that happens the hardships that we face will increase because the people are opposed to you know the lifestyle that we have chosen the godly lifestyle which we have chosen so they will oppose us so not only will we have the normal hardships which other people face we also have this additional hardship of you know standing up for christ and that brings uh, trials into our life but jesus says take heart don't feel discouraged don't feel like giving up you never have to feel that you have to give up because as long as i am there i will always make a way i will find some way for you to come out of the situation so it says here jesus says here take heart in the sense don't get discouraged 
don't think that this is finished you know you 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 now it's all over no more hope no never ever think that take heart because i have overcome the world i know exactly how to deal with this world because jesus says you know i lived in this world i was part of it i know exactly what's going on over here i know what the pressures feel like i know what people are capable of i know all the things that can go wrong i am aware of it i've undergone all of that but i overcame all of that when i was in the world you know when he was not even using his divine powers you see he was completely relying upon upon god upon god the father and he was choosing to be 100% human so in his humanness he overcame every aspect of the world including the trials and the hardships and the cares and anxieties of this life and all of that so he knows how to overcome it and he says i will be your teacher come to me take my yoke upon you learn from me and you'll discover how gentle and humble i am in the way i teach you such a beautiful thing that the lord can do for us so we choose to trust him and he will enable us to uh, you know uh, live our lives right um, just you know moving very quickly into some points which are given you know in in our uh, notes regarding how to be overcomers in this world so the first of course is that we should you know we we've, we've kind of talked about all these things already so this is like you know we are summarizing it uh, so the first point is we choose to set our desires on what is above because as long as our eyes are upon the things of this world and we are going on feeding those desires those desires will grow strong obviously so rather than you know keeping our eyes on material things and allowing those desires to get stronger we choose to set our desires on the things above um um so okay um we will need to look at maybe two uh bible passages just to get you know the both sides of the of the situation you know um maybe we could first read out ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 12 and 13 ecclesiastes 3 12 and 13 please Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 12 and 13 I know that there is nothing better for people than to than to be happy and to do good while they live that each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all their toil this is the gift of god okay let's just hold on to that scripture and now let's look at another scripture uh this would be first timothy 6 17 and 18 first timothy 6 17 and 18 command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant nor to put their hope in wealth which is so uncertain but to put their hope in god who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment command uh, was, them to yeah. command them to do good to be rich in good deeds and to be generous and willing to share okay so we see this is this a balance that has to be uh, struck so in ecclesiastes 3 it talks about how it is good you know for us to be happy uh, for us to eat and drink and find satisfaction in the work that we are doing all that is a gift of god but there's another side to it the other side is mentioned in first timothy 6:17 to 18 which we read out just now where it says you see even though you're having a good time and you're enjoying you know all that you have all that god has given and gifted to you you are not placing your hope in those things continue to place your hope in god so he continues to be your first priority so keeping him in mind you know you choose to uh, be rich in good deeds you know in the, in the, in the things which god has um, you know purposed for your life so you allow him to be your first priority you do the things which please him you do the good deeds each day that god has set before you to be done for his kingdom uh, for his people you continue to do all of that because even though you're enjoying your life and you're having all these good things that god has gifted to you 
your focus is not on them your focus is on eternity your focus is on what god is preparing you for for this amazing future which is awaiting you and therefore you choose to be rich in good deeds and you choose to you know um, not just hold on to your wealth but generously share it with other people and you choose never to become arrogant where you think oh i don't need god i'm well you know i'm well established i can take care of things now so now i'll start doing things my way no never allow yourself to reach a point where you say i will do things my way rather you always choose to say no lord my hope is in you so i will choose to do things your way i will submit to what you are asking me to do so there is a balance to be struck we need, we god has gifted us with things that we can enjoy we must be we must be happy we must enjoy those things god likes that uh, in fact it says uh, god who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment so yes we are meant to enjoy the life that we have in the world but we do not allow ourselves to grow arrogant we keep our eyes focused on the heavenly things of god and um, we choose to have our priorities you know in line with whatever he is asking us to uh, do and that is why it says in matthew 6 31 to 33 this is the advice that jesus gives in matthew 6 31 to 33 uh, yeah if someone can read out Matthew 6 verses 31 to 33 So do not worry saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear for the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well it is so plain i mean jesus would never ever lie never he would never lie he says here all these things will be given to you as well so he's saying keep your priorities right seek first you know what is good for the kingdom of god seek his righteousness you know living in the right manner according to godly values you know keep these things first in your life and all these other things will be given to you as well the pagans they run after these things you see because they have nobody else to provide these things for them either they do it for themselves or they know they have they're finished but you have a heavenly father who knows that you need these things so he will take care of these things and that is why we, we saw in the previous scripture where it says uh, put your hope in god who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment so we 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 can trust god to take care of us we don't have to worry about that but we don't have to desperately run after these things to the point where we are choking out the things of god no we don't need to do that we don't need to go to that extent so we, as long as we keep our priorities right god will our father it says our heavenly father knows that you need these things so he will take care of all that we uh, require and um, so in the context of all these verses which we have looked at you know we we now finally come to this verse which you know says what you should be setting your heart upon uh, so um, if uh, someone could read out colossians chapter 3 verses 1 to 3 colossians 3 1 to 3 since then you have been raised with christ set your hearts on things above where christ is seated at the right hand of god set your minds on things above not on earthly things for you died and your life is now hidden with christ in god yeah so it says over here your life is now hidden with christ in god so set your mind on things which are about christ set your mind on things above and the word used over there that's the greek word which uh, phroneo which basically means what exactly does it mean setting your mind on something basically you direct your mind towards that particular thing you know you you you, you, you start striving towards that particular thing so whatever you okay let us say you know i have i've set my mind on you know um, on winning the marathon 
So what do I do? My entire thinking, you know, I, I, I align it towards, you know, how, how do I win that marathon? What are the things that I should be doing? Uh, how do I equip myself? So all your energies, everything that you're doing is focused towards that marathon that you're going to be running, that you want to win. So um, over here, it says, set your mind, you know, your entire mind is focused on and the direction of your thoughts, your energies, everything is, is now directed towards God, towards what he wants, towards the priorities that he has set. And it says, set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. So rather than allowing all your focus, your thoughts, your energies to be focused in, in the direction of earthly things, you choose to focus them towards um, heavenly things. Because we know that Jesus Christ will take care of whatever we require for our everyday life. Okay, so um, that was point, uh, the, the first point, you know, about being an overcomer in the world. Uh, there are uh, another couple of points and we'll, um, you know, cover them next class. So next class, we'll continue this topic of overcoming the world. And then uh, we'll also get into overcoming the devil. Uh, so I think sure we will have time for both of those things next week. So the focus will be more on overcoming the world and the devil, uh, you know, in the uh, next session that we will have. So we need to close now. Uh, so let's just close with a word of prayer. Thank you so much, O Lord, for all the important lessons that you reminded us of today. We pray, O Father, uh, that we will be people uh, who will keep our eyes focused on you. Even though many things appear attractive, when we look into your word, we realize that there are things which are more attractive. There are things which are more permanent and of eternal value. So we pray that we would be shaped by your word, shaped and led by, you, by your Holy Spirit, rather than, being, uh, rather than following the world, following the worldly system, and following what the people of the world are saying. So we pray, O oh Lord, that we would always keep our priorities right so that our lives and our families can move in the correct direction where we can have fulfilled, blessed lives in you so that you can always continue to provide us richly with everything that we require for our enjoyment because that's what you have promised in your scripture. Help us, O oh Lord, to strike the right balance between the responsibilities of the world and placing you first so that all other things fall into place in our lives and in our homes. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much for you know being there in the class. And uh, yeah, we'll meet again next class. Thank you.